Welcome to part two of this Q&A. As you can see, I've convinced Lauren to come on again and ask me all the questions that you've asked in this post that you can see here. I got 50 questions in the first video, in the first part. There was something flying. In the first part, we were able to answer quite a few questions. Lauren even gave her input. And in this part, hopefully we'll answer as many questions as possible. But like I said, we've got a lot of questions, so there might be a part two. Oh, there is, this is the part two. There might be a part three and a part four. But anyways, without further ado, let's get started. But before you do, don't forget to subscribe. And smash the like button. Oh yeah. <laughs> smash the like button. And well, that's it really. Go with the questions. The first question is from Anna. Is it possible to have merch on Amazon with a print on demand and also to be a member of an affiliate program on Amazon? And if I can give a link to my store on Amazon as affiliate link. Okay. That, I'm going to try and decide for that question. Um, for what it sounds like, you're asking if you can do merch by Amazon with print on demand and if you can be an Amazon associate and make money with like basically being an Amazon affiliate, I think. Um, I want to say yes, it's two completely separate things. You can 100% do merch by Amazon and also have an Amazon associates account where you post links, not on my channel, of course, but where you post links and uh, people go and buy and you get affiliate commissions or, you know, print on demand, much by Amazon, where you post designs and you get sales that way. But yes, both are two separate businesses you can 100% do together. Okay, next we have the question that kind of inspired this. Oh, you're gonna actually ask it? Yep. Okay, well this is Lauren. <laughs> Not, this is um, Anindita, my biggest fan. Not a question though, I wanna see Lauren more in your videos. She's an amazing artist and I follow her on Instagram. Pretty sure she's an amazing person as well. Thank you so much. You are the reason I was able to convince Lauren. See, I've been trying for months and all it took was that one comment. So do you see what nice comments actually do, people? Nice comments are lovely. So leave a whole bunch of nice comments about how amazing Lauren has been in this video. And maybe she'll be in more videos. But anyways, moving on. Okay, the next actual question. Name as many evergreen design subjects, themes, ideas as you can. No. Moving on. <laughs> this is not a video about me just naming a whole bunch of niches and evergreen design ideas. I tell you what, I'll give you one. Job roles. Job roles is brilliant, okay? You can tar you can have one design and target bartenders, electricians, technicians, builders, nurses. Give me more job roles. Vets. Vets. Teachers. That's one you're gonna get, but I'm not gonna spend the next hour on this video just listing evergreen designs. Moving on. Okay. Kenneth, would would love to know more about how to get accepted on merch by Amazon. I've seen comments that people say they're just simply write the description and get accepted and some works so well on the description and I didn't get accept. Did. Did what? Which one? <laughs> Kenneth. Where's Kenneth? This guy. Would love to know how to get accepted by merch by Amazon. I see people comments saying they just, they write down the description and get accepted. Okay, well, honestly, it's, when I applied, I got accepted about nine months later, I want to say. It's in one of the videos. I don't remember the exact date. Some people get accepted in the next minute. Um, people are getting accepted a lot faster now. If you don't get accepted first time, apply again. If you don't get accepted second time, apply again. And that will go on and on and on until you eventually get accepted. There's no magic description or magic things to say. You just gotta, you gotta just keep trying. Another three part question um, from Michael. Is it worth listing on Etsy? Sure. The more places you're, you're listed on, the more chance of getting sales. Okay. Teespring or Redbubble, which pays better? It's not really about which pays better. It's about the base price because the price of the thing you're selling is up to you. Um, I would have said Teespring if it was three months ago. I will now say Redbubble. And if you want to know why, I have so many videos on the problems with Red, with, uh, with the problems with Teespring nowadays. So Redbubble. And the last one: What's the highest profit margin on products from Printify? I don't know these numbers off the top <laughs> of my head. I'm sorry. As, as you probably know, there's hundreds of print-on-demand companies. Um, I can tell you the highest profit I ever got was when I sold hoodies, and I would sell. I don't remember how much I sold for. I think I sold for about 30, yeah, 39.99 and I made a solid $20 profit. So that was my biggest earner. Um, Sheila, I've been doing some research on Redbubble instead of others like Printful, maybe because they market my designs. Do you believe that they are better than others and why? I do think Redbubble's good. Um, I think 
merch from Amazon's the best because they focus on the customer and I love a company that focuses on the customer just because the customer's important and they'll come back and buy more. Um, so Redbubble's very good and I do like them because they've got they've got pretty good customer service, they've got decent shipping time, they've got really cool products and it kind of feels like a platform for artists and I like that a lot. Um, Rezus, another three questions. Oof. These are long. Is there any way to kind of automate the Teespring pricing like in Redbubble where we can just set the amount of margin that we want to earn for each product and set it to all of our designs? I don't know. I'm sorry. I've stopped using Teespring and I don't plan on going back to them until they change a lot of things. Okay. Um, the second one, which one do you think is better? Designing on an oversaturated niche, but you're pretty good at that niche. Example, I'm a musician and I'm going to go for that music niche, especially on guitar. Or designing a low saturated niche, but you don't even know where to start. I would say maybe do both. I know it's an annoying answer, but have a few of the oversaturated ones just because why not? They're going to be good designs. You know where you're getting, you know where you're like, you're getting into getting into and then you've clicked on something clicked on Stacey. and then also um do a few in smaller niches like put yourself in lots of different areas so that you can have chance of bring you know income from lots of different designs lots of different niches and the last question from Rizas: what do you think about seasonal niches like halloween christmas new year valentine's day etc are they good niches to work on? Is there any special trick to catch these trends? That's a good question. Um, honestly, those niches are good for fast cash, you know, quick profits, that kind of thing. They're not good if you are, you know, making money to survive and earn a living kind of thing. They're good just to make money because you need money then and there. Um, and in terms of tips and tricks, just make sure you fill your tags with all the relevant keywords. Um, there's a reason I haven't made any Halloween um print on demand videos and that's basically because I don't like these quick get rich topics anything like that because I like to do something where I know it's going to make me money in the long run rather than put a lot of effort for a quick buck right I want to make money continuously you can't plan if you're just you know making money in quick spurts um the next one is from tear um it's I like that name that's more of a request than a question. Interesting. I've recently opened up a shop on Etsy t-shirts and I'm kind of clueless on what I'm supposed to do um, if someone makes an order. Can you make a video on that? Well, I hope you can make a video on that. I will look into that after this video. Okay. I mean, what else do you want to say? <laughs> um, we have... You keep losing the place. No, because it says, here's a second question, and I don't remember Blaze asking a first, unless we're going backwards. No, it, it, it's not in order. Oh, okay. A question from Blaze. That's a cool name. I am fully invested in the success of my print-on-demand business. I'm literally spending every extra penny that I have trying to get this to work, which isn't very much. I want to make sure that I'm maximising the, the output of my dollars. If you only had less than $500 to build a print-on-demand business from the ground... <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't loading. <laughs> stressing me out. <laughs> yeah, it's a long question. You got to, we had to click the read more and it wasn't loading and Lauren um, gets stressed under pressure. <laughs> okay, let's start that again. Oh no, you're kidding me. Just continue where you were. It's a long question. Okay, if you only... This is the question. If you only had less than $500 to build a print-on-demand business from the ground, where would you put your money? I already have about 40 designs, completed research on a bunch of niches, paid people on Fiverr to complete small tasks to get my online presence, dial, my online presence dialed in, and ran a PPE ad following the strategy you showed on one of your videos. I would really like to make sure my next several investments are the ones that begin generating generating revenue. So if you could comment on using your money wisely in this business, that would be great. Thank you for that incredibly detailed question, Blaze. Um, honestly, if I had $500, I probably wouldn't do print on demand. I know that's not what you want to hear, um, but I'm going to answer your question regardless because you want to know what to do with it. So if you can't design, putting your money into Fiverr Designs is pretty good um, make sure you're uploading your designs to merch by amazon you know redbubble maybe even etsy and 
um, just because those get a lot of organic searches. So you'll be able to actually make money without having to spend anything on ads. And then in terms of ads, I would make potentially a few story ads on um, Instagram just because I've, they're just doing great. They're really, really good. And I, I do genuinely believe in them. So um, maybe put a bit of money in there to test it. But again, if I did have $500, I would do stuff like, you know, affiliate marketing and advertise an affiliate marketing video or even potentially look into starting Amazon, something like that. Um, but but yeah, ad advertising on, on Instagram is probably probably the next step for you. Carolina, moving on. Hi Shimmy, not sure if you have answered this before. Is it possible to have multiple stores on Redbubble? Oh, someone replied to her. What do they say? Yes, but you have to use a different email for every store. I asked the same question to another person who said they contacted Redbubble for that answer. Okay, well, there we go. <laughs> there you go. You have to have multiple emails, multiple accounts. Oh, it's just, that's annoying. That's really annoying. So uh, I guess that's, that's how you can do it. And it's, and it's allowed, right? I would be nervous to do that, but clearly Redbubble says it's allowed, so brilliant. But yeah, that's how you do it. Um, the next question, is buying tier 10 merch by Amazon account a good idea? And is Redbubble worth it? I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a good idea to buy an Amazon account in general. It's just risky. Um, you don't want to get anything shut. And also a tier 10 is not worth that much money. I mean, just build yourself up there. You'll get there. And is Redbubble worth it? Yeah, sure. Why not? It's not costing you anything. Put your designs on there. See what happens. What's the worst that could happen? Um, Stacy, where do you see yourself in five years time as in career wise, business wise, not actual location? Also, if you were a biscuit, what would you be and why? <laughs> um, where do I see myself in five years? Good question. I actually just answered this on a podcast I shot tonight with a friend. I would hope I have maybe a million subscribers. Who knows? Um, I would like to be somewhere big on YouTube, big into podcasting, big into, um, trying to change the educational system um, in a way that is good for teenagers growing up and actually learning about things like taxes and mortgages and finances and money management and investing, not just, you know, the distance from the earth to the sun. Um, yeah, so that's that. And then also um, affiliate marketing. I'll probably still be doing Amazon FBA, but I can't be sure about that. Um, and hopefully I would have started doing some form of business in my car, my car idea. I've got lots of different car ideas I would like to go into. So hopefully that works out. And in terms of a biscuit, did you say? Yeah. Um, if you're a biscuit, what would you be and why? I do like those fat American cookies. My sister makes the best ones. They're like this big. And why? Because they taste bloody amazing. What biscuit would you be? Um, I would probably be a chocolate chip biscuit but with dairy milk chocolate right fresh from the oven okay. i like it when it's like still melty don't like the dairy milk bit. i don't like chocolate chip biscuits when they go merch by amazon how long does it take to get approved or even rejected how long will that process take you really answered that. yeah i answered that a bit earlier on and the next one how to get approved by merch by amazon also answered it have you any concerns or thoughts about the new iOS 14 update no longer tracking users' search habits by default and it and its impact to generating ad campaigns from Dermot? Really interesting question that is because obviously retargeting ads are massive and I didn't actually know that was a feature of iOS 14. Uh, am I worried about it? Well, clearly not because I didn't know it was a feature of <laughs> iOS 14. Um, Look, in terms of print on demand, I wouldn't be worried about it because a lot of people don't even do advertising on print on demand. In terms of every other business, it's scary. <laughs> it is scary, but I mean, does that block on Instagram and, and, and Facebook, all, all these apps you use, the ads that you see there? Like, I haven't done enough research into it to know, to be able to answer. So at the moment, I'm not worried, but you have made me a bit worried. So I'm going to look into it after this video. Um, do you want to stop? We're at 17 minutes. Let's do one more question. Okay. Um, this is Blaze again. Can you comment on my approach to building my print on demand business? My current plan is to build up. Oh, I should always press. Oh, this is long. My current plan is to build up a kind of generic novelty storefront. I then plan to take it and get, get it to about 50 designs placed on several products. 
What I'm going to do with that is begin experimenting with my different niches and designs using this first store by running paid Facebook ads and testing out different ad strategies. I'm hoping that in a month or two, I can begin creating storefronts based on profitable, specific niches. Will I be able to easily turn a profit using this generic novelty storefront I'm describing? I know that in your videos, you say that it's important to create a new page for each niche, but does this always have to be the case? Managing multiple pages seems like it could be a lot to juggle rather than keeping everything on one page and just making the page success sufficiently general. What are your thoughts? I find it really hard to remember what you said at the beginning of that, but I'm going to try anyways. <laughs> Basically, um, what do you think about having multiple pages or single page? I first of all, I like your approach. Really good. So congrats on just doing something as well. Um, I hope I hope it works for you. If it doesn't work for you, find out why and you know change something. In terms of having a generic page, I did this as well. I had tons of individual pages and then I switched to a generic page and it slowed down drastically because... The whole reason that you have a niche specific page is people feel connected with it and they want to follow and they want to buy your product. So if you make a dog page, right, and you advertise to the dog audience or like even go even more niche down the Dutch hound audience or something, someone who likes Dutch hounds are going to really like your page. Um, Dutch hounds. Or how am I saying it? Dutch hounds. How is it? Dutch hounds. Dutch hounds. Dutch hounds. That's just your Mancunian accent. Okay. Let's Let's pick another dog. Give me another dog. Bulldogs. There you go, bulldogs. Okay. Am I saying it right? Yes. Um, you've got, so yeah, so if you're advertising a bulldog campaign um, and, you know, the page is just a generic page that has uh, cat t shirts and bulldog t shirts and uh, uh, computer gaming t shirts, that person won't feel so connected and probably won't like and probably will just be like, ah, they're just making random designs, blah, 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 blah. But if you have a niche specific page, I know it's more work, but. Um, it will be you'll have a much higher conversion rate and it's always about the conversion rate and just by the way Even if it is more work that doesn't mean you should try and skip corners not that you're trying to skip corners, but skipping corners Doesn't isn't necessarily a good idea if you want to make money It's going to involve doing a lot of work and yes I had over a hundred pages and it was ridiculous in fact I think I had a page for pretty much every single state of America because I did state tees at one point I then had a page for a whole bunch of names. I had way more than a hundred pages. What am I talking about? I had like three, four hundred pages on Facebook. It was ridiculous and it was absolutely impossible to manage. But like that's that's the game. That's the game. You could do a generic Shopify store for sure and sell generic products and just be a generic store. Um, but if you're going in for like hard into niche specific, uh, a niche specific idea, like an like a actual dog type or cat type, then I would keep it niche specific. Specific? What did I say? Pacific, like the ocean. Did I actually? Yes. <laughs> I get wrong with that. Stop making fun of me. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching this part two of the Q&A. How well did we do? Um, Are there lots of questions left? One, two, three, four, five. Do you have to count? Just scroll. Yeah, okay. Look, it looks like we Wait, only need to... Uh, more video. Yeah, it looks like there are enough questions to do a part three and that's about it. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching and again, thank you to Lauren for asking these questions so elegantly and so <laughs> beautifully and um, really looking forward to, you know, hopefully seeing you in the next video and if you want to see Lauren in more videos, leave nice comments down below because they work. <laughs> they really do work and we'll see you in part three.